Good morning, everyone. And uh, welcome to our worship service for June 2nd. We begin our worship with the ringing of the church bell. For a change of pace, uh, the pictures in our uh, slideshow today come from Scotland. So I hope you enjoy the Scottish uh, landscape. Um, wanted to share some announcements with you. Uh, I will be on vacation June 3rd to June 16th. Uh, so if you have a um, pastoral concern, please call uh, Lowell Kratzer. You're invited to join the Sunday School class for uh, their lesson after uh, church today. They are studying Life Lessons from Ephesians by Max Lucado. Trustees meet Tuesday at 7. Next Sunday, Lowell will be our guest preacher, and it's also Dress Down Day, so put an extra dollar in Stu Bear's jar if you are able, and he is collecting for Meals and Wheels. Um, and next Sunday, you'll have refreshments after worship. Uh, the women of the church have a meeting uh, June, Tuesday, June 11th at 7, and then on June 16th, Father's Day, uh, Brent Stoner will be our guest preacher, and uh, that will also be our Joyful Noise offering Sunday. Vacation Bible School is coming up. That's uh, June 16 to June 20 from 6 to 8 p.m. There's still time for, to pre-register. And if you pre-register, then you get a free T-shirt. So call Trinity and uh, make sure you get registered for that. Uh, we are planning at this point to have uh, lunch together at the Bread of Life on June 19th. Um, I'm uh, going to ask you to contact Patty while I'm away and let her know if you plan to go to the Bread of Life for that, uh, for that lunch. And then if you are baking cakes for Meals on Wheels, uh, please uh, bring them to the church on June 20th uh, from 8 to 6 p.m. And on June 23rd, we will have uh, worship out in the park. Uh, if you worship with us online, most likely our service will be live streamed on Trinity's page that Sunday. And the service will begin at 9 a.m. and we are celebrating the, uh, vacation, the vacation Bible School program. Are there any other announcements? We have 25 kids pre-registered for Bible school. That's really good. Okay. Um, I also have a thank you card here. Dear Lost Creek Presbyterian Church, this is from Will Orwig. Thank you for the care package that you sent me. I really appreciate all the support I get from the whole congregation out there. So uh, thank you again for your donations to the care packages and supporting our college and um, doctoral students. I've been enjoying the snacks, too. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's prepare our hearts and minds to worship God as we listen to our meditation music.
The true light, which enlightens everyone, has come into the world. To all who receive him, who believe in his name, he gives the power to become children of God. Please join me in the call to worship. We come together to observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Renew us by your spirit, Lord. We come together to praise God with festive songs and shouts of joy. Renew us by your spirit, Lord. We come together to hear the voice of our Savior calling us to compassion. Renew us by your spirit, Lord. We come together to experience the abundance of God's grace. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Lord God of the nations, you have revealed your will to all people and promised us your saving help. May we hear and do what you command, that the darkness may be overcome by the power of your light. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And let's share God's peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. And uh, let's uh, see who is worshiping with us online. Uh, Tom Heckman is with us. Glad to see, uh, have you with us, Tom. Okay. And... Okay. Uh, Noreen is with us, and Kathy Hutchinson, and Rich Rausch, and Debbie Gleim, and Barb Hutchinson, and Faye Pearson, and Melinda Miser, and Sandy Brown, and Penny Dunn, and Tessa and Roger Monroe, and Tim and Missy Waite, and Mary Ann Gibbons, and Dale Ann Goodling, and Yvonne Fowler. Um, those are names that I can see. Uh, if I didn't call out your name, I apologize, uh, but you are welcome as well. Let's uh, join together in singing hymn number 130, How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds. be seated. If you would turn in your bulletins to our prayer of confession and let us join together in confessing our sins to God and one another. Let us pray. Lord of life, you call us to rest, but we are too busy working. You call us to offer rest to others, but we are too busy demanding. 
You call us to remember that you always work in our lives, but we are too busy worrying. Forgive our constant striving and our obsession with work. Remind us that our value comes from you, not from anything we produce or how productive we appear to others. Teach us the rhythms of your grace and grant us rest for our weary souls. Amen. Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Christ lifts the heavy burdens of sin and frees us for new life in his name. Trust that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. And having been assured of God's grace and mercy in our lives, let us respond with an affirmation of faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let's stand and sing the Gloria Patri together. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be, world without. As we come to a time of prayer, um, this morning or this week, we are praying for Paxton Presbyterian Church and their interim pastor, Kent Carter. Let us pray for the leadership of the staff and session as they continue to lift up the gospel through the church's work and witness. So please keep Paxton Presbyterian Church in your prayers this week. And uh, as far as birthdays and anniversaries go, the one that I, we have for this week is on June 8th. Uh, Lauren from the McCoysville congregation um, has a birthday. Are there any other birthdays or anniversaries that we know of? Okay. Let us sing and uh, sign happy birthday. God bless you. Oh, uh, whatever you want to do. <laughs> I'm thinking I might go back to my old way of doing things. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. That's probably Southern. I don't... Probably my... Um, southern accent coming out there in the way I'm saying birthday. But anyway, um, as we come to the Lord for prayer, um, if you are worship worshiping with us online and you have something that you don't want to share with the public, you can use Facebook Messenger to uh, send us prayer concerns and joys, and we will include them at the end of the service. Uh, right now, are there any general joys that we want to share this morning? Ah. <laughs> so Nolan is turning seven yesterday, so celebrating his birthday. That's great. Any other joys? Okay. Don is starting to feel better, and we're very glad for that. Uh, any concerns that we want to lift up to the Lord? Okay. 
Okay. Okay, so more ugly weather in the Midwest and South. Um, so we pray for all those affected by that. And uh, Dale Goodling, who's been worshiping with us online, his birthday is today. So that birthday song was for you too, Dale. Um, obviously, uh, prayers. Um, Megan, Ethan, and I are flying out to Oregon on uh, Tuesday, and we'll be back the following Wednesday. Uh, so, traveling mercies and uh, a restful vacation out there. Um, Angela is taking care of Gracie, so prayers for her. Um, and prayers for the congregation while I'm away. Anything else? Okay. Let's bring our joys and concerns to the Lord. Uh, each of our petitions ends, Lord, in your mercy. I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. God of grace, we thank you for the gift of Sabbath rest. You have not created us for endless labor, but have instead created us in your image. You created the world and called it good, and you give us the power to create beauty too. You fashioned the world for love, and you call us into the work of love, too. You rested on the seventh day, and you invite us to rest, too. Help us to accept the good gifts you offer to us. Teach us to resist the temptations of our productivity-obsessed culture. Give us the grace to close our laptops, turn off our phones, and make time for connection, for wonder, for joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are overworked, whether by necessity or out of anxiety. We pray for those who work endlessly but still do not have enough to make ends meet. We pray for those who are searching for work without success or who find themselves unfulfilled by the work they do. Provide for all who are in need, Lord. Grant rest to exhausted bodies and frazzled minds. When we have the opportunity to ease someone else's burdens, move us to offer grace and lead us to seek social changes that would enable all to have good work to do, enough to meet their needs, and freedom to enjoy the life that you have given to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, too, for your overworked creation, sovereign God. Remind us of your commandment not only to let ourselves rest, but to let the earth rest as well. Curb our greed and teach us to reduce our consumption that the ecosystems you have created would have the chance to flourish alongside the human beings you have created. Make us partners in your healing work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those we love who are in need of your healing in body, mind, or spirit. Hear our prayers especially for those we name before you in the silence of this time. Tend the sick and bind up the brokenhearted. Draw near to the lonely and soothe the anxious. Comfort all those who mourn. Make us instruments of your peace and bearers of your compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all, we pray for the church in this place and in every place. Fill us with deep and holy joy that we might reflect your goodness to the world around us. May we join you in drawing the whole creation into your divine rhythms of work and rest. We ask these things in Christ's name, and together we pr pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right. Reese, do you want to come on up?
Hi, how are you doing? Good. Um, do you know what a rule is? You don't know what a rule is? I bet you do. A rule is something that someone else gives us to tell us how we are to behave. Do you have any rules at your house? What do you have? No jumping on the couch. That's very good. Yes, that's a good rule. Any other rules? Sometimes the rules are very specific like that, and sometimes they're more general, like, you know, when, you're, when your parents are busy doing something, no running in the house, you know. Uh, no fighting with your brothers and sisters. Uh huh. Okay, and you're not supposed to fight with them, are you? No, no, no. Um, sometimes we uh, make rules like clean up your plate when you're eating, right? Yes. Or you can't uh, go and play until you finish eating. Yeah. Um, we we uh, have a lot of different rules, um, and those rules are supposed to guide us in how we live our lives. Um, so, for example, why, why are you told not to jump on the couch? Oh, because you, you're supposed to not. That's right. We don't really think about why our parents give us these rules sometimes. Um, fighting with your brothers and sisters, that's, that's an easy one because, you know, that people get hurt when you fight, right? Um, but jumping on the couch, not so much. But you know what? If you jump on the couch too much, you'll break it. And then you can't sit on it. You can't, you can't use it anymore, right? And even uh, adults, even your parents, have rules that we have to obey. Um, different people give us rules, whether it's at work or whether it's um, out in the world or even at home. We have rules to obey. But all those rules are meant to help us live a better life. And in the Bible, there are a lot of rules, too. Uh, one of the rules is to remember the Sabbath day. Do you know what that means? No. Uh, Sabbath um, means the last day of the week. Uh, for Jews like Jesus, it was Saturday. For Christians, we think about the Sabbath on Sunday, even though it's the beginning of the week for us. We think of it on Sunday because we celebrate Jesus rising from the dead. Um, but God gave us that rule to encourage us to take a break every now and then. Did your parent, do your parents ever make you go and take a nap? No? Did they used to make you go and take a nap? Yeah. So as you got older, you didn't need, need so much rest, right? Well, sometimes uh, people, especially adults, need to be reminded to take a break and to rest Maybe not take a nap, but to take some time off and just let themselves relax. Uh, God didn't create us, create us to work, 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 work all the time. We're supposed to take some time every week to rest. And we can use that time to think about God, to give praise to God. We come on Sundays, we come to church to, uh, and we worship online uh, to praise God and to give thanks for everything God has given us and also to bring any of our problems to God. So that is a law that God gave us. God didn't give it to us just to see if we could do it. God gave it to us because he, he knows what's good for us. And when you read the, the rules in the Bible, and you learn about different rules in the Bible, remember God gives us those rules to help us live our best life. And God knows, uh, God created us, and God knows what's best for us, okay? So uh, let's bow our heads and close our eyes, and would you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me and giving me rules to guide me in how to live. May I respect the rules because I know you gave them out of love. Amen. All right, thanks for our time together.
Let's uh, join together in singing hymn 318, There is a Place of Quiet Rest. Please stand. May be seated. Our scripture lesson is taken from Mark chapter 2, verses 23 through chapter 3, verse 6. Listen now to the word of the Lord. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And Jesus said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then he said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. The Lord always blesses the reading the hearing of his holy word. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen.
So as I was uh, mentioning to uh, Reese, uh, one of the laws that uh, God gave us in the Ten Commandments is remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Uh, as, as I mentioned, for the Jews, the Sabbath day was the last day of the week, Saturday, and um, their day starts at sundown. So they would go, they would rest on the, on the Sabbath from sundown Friday to sundown on Saturday. Uh, Christians, however, have taken the Sabbath day to be Sunday because that is when we celebrate uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Um, and just as the uh, Israelites and the Jews uh, tried to observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, Christians do the same thing. Uh, Albert Wynn wrote a book called A Christian Primer, talking about the different uh, documents that um, we use in church worship. And he talked about this law, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, and was recalling his own experience as a child growing up uh, and how strict his parents were about Sabbath day observance. Sabbath day was for God alone. And so they would go to church in the morning, and then when they got home, he was not allowed to listen to the radio unless it was religious music. And he had had enough of that at church, so he didn't listen to the radio. Um, he was not allowed to go out and play sports. When baseball and movies came to town and they were um, being done on Sundays, he was not allowed to go and see or, or participate in those things. Uh, he couldn't even read the Sunday comics. I love the Sunday comics. He wasn't even allowed to read the Sunday comics. He had to save that for the next day. The only thing he was allowed to read were Christian books or the denominations magazine. He was flip, flipping through the denom denominations magazine and found a humor section and was reading some of the jokes and realized that some of these were really off-color, inappropriate jokes. And apparently the editors were so pious they didn't realize what they really were saying. And that gave Albert Wynn an idea. One Sunday morning, he's sitting at table at lunch and he says, oh, I, I, I have this great joke. And he tells them one of these off-color jokes, and his parents are aghast. <gasps> How could you say such a thing? Where did you hear that? Well, in the denominational magazine. And they said, no, you didn't. Yes, I did. And he went and got the magazine and showed it to them, and they read it. And then that day they decided maybe the Sunday comics weren't such a bad thing to read on Sundays <laughs> after all. <laughs> Different people take what God said about the Sabbath um, differently, uh, as with Albert Wynn's uh, family, uh, for many generations, you know, it was a day to be reserved just for God. But as time has passed, we have uh, seen uh, the, the uh, restorative nature of the Sabbath as being important, and we have allowed more things that we feel would give rest to our bodies and to our minds like watching sports and movies and even playing in sports. Uh, we also now live in a society that where many um, businesses are open seven days a week, and some people can't dedicate Sunday only to God. And so we, we talk about how the Sabbath is a day of rest, and we encourage everyone to at least find one day out of the week that they can rest and re rejuvenate their bodies. But we have different ideas about how to observe the Sabbath, what should be allowed, what shouldn't be allowed. Uh, we can become kind of um, legalistic about it and judgmental of others who don't fit in with our understanding of the Sabbath law. We aren't the first ones to do that. Uh, the scribes and the Pharisees were Jews who were committed to studying God's laws in the Bible and then teaching people how to apply them to their everyday lives. And over the centuries, the scribes and the uh, Pharisees came up with 1,521 infractions for the Sabbath day, broken down into 39 different categories. 
and you are expected to observe all these different, uh, or to avoid all these different infractions. Now, to be clear, there were different groups of Pharisees and different groups of scribes and different ones held to different beliefs. And so not everybody followed the same rules. And they would often get into big arguments about that. But in our scripture lesson today, Mark presents to us a couple of Sabbath day stories about Jesus. And clearly what Jesus is doing is, is something that shouldn't be done on the Sabbath. The first is a story where Jesus and his disciples are walking through a field and they are plucking heads of grain. Now Matthew and Luke tell us they are doing this because they are hungry. Mark doesn't say anything about why they are doing it. And so one of the obvious answers might be they are hungry and they are plucking heads of grain and eating them. Some scholars have looked at the Greek and suggested that what it's talking about is making a path through a field. Um, and who knows, maybe they were just being like kids and picking uh, heads of grain and throwing them at each other and having fun as they walked through the field. We don't know. The reality is, though, it didn't have to be done on the Sabbath day. Plucking heads of grain was considered a form of reaping, a form of work. If they were hungry, they could have waited until they got to their destination. If they were cutting a path through a field, they could have just walked around the field. Um, if they were plucking the grains and throwing each other to have fun, how dare you have fun on the Lord's Day? But they didn't have to do these things on the Sabbath. But when Jesus answers these Pharisees, apparently there's these Pharisees who either, either see it happening or are actually traveling with them. Um, when they see this, they complain to Jesus about it, and instead of trying to argue about what is and isn't allowed on the Sabbath day, Jesus reminds them of, of a story from King David. David goes to the tabernacle, and he and his men are hungry, and so he convinces the priest, Abiathar, to uh, give them some of the loaves of the bread of presence that were set out in the tabernacle in the presence of God and represented the 12 tribes of Israel and uh, were only allowed to be eaten by the priests. But the priest gives, it to, uh, gives them to David and his men and they eat of it. Now there's a uh, couple of problems with this story. Um, one of them is that... Um, it would seem to be an argument, well, David was allowed to eat uh, the bread that wasn't for him when he was hungry. My disciples could do the same thing. It's a precedent. But again, we aren't told in Mark why the disciples were doing this or that they couldn't wait. The other problem is that Mark tells us that Abiathar was the high priest except that it was Ahimelech. Ahimelech was Abiathar's father. He was the high priest when this event happened. This event actually happened not when David was king, but when he uh, was on the run from King Saul. Saul had, be had uh, become jealous of David and all his success out in the battlefield, and uh, he was trying to kill David, and so David was on the run. He hadn't had a chance to pack his uh, travel bag, and so he stops at the uh, tabernacle and asks for help. He doesn't ex actually explain to the uh, priest why he needs the bread, just that he needs it. And he gets it, and he eats it. So why does Mark tell us that Abiathar was the priest instead of Ahimelech? Abiathar was the priest when David was actually king. Maybe it's just a mistake. You know, everybody knew that Abi Abiathar was the uh, priest when David was king. You know that, right? Uh, so maybe, it was just, maybe he was just remembering wrong. But I think he remembered quite well. And he is, ref he is making us think about David not as a man on the run, but as a king 
chosen by God to guide God's people in following God's laws. And that makes sense of what Jesus says next. The Sabbath was, not, was made for people, not people for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath also. Jesus is making a very basic statement. God gave us the laws about the Sabbath for our benefit, to bless us, not to be hoops for us to jump to prove to God that we are righteous people deserving of God's love. God already loves us. He's given us these uh, laws to help us live our best life. And how we follow these laws is guided by Jesus Christ. Just as David, as king, was called by God to lead the people in understanding God's laws and obeying them, Jesus is now the Lord. The Son of Man is a title for the Messiah. He's the Savior. He's the Lord. And he is the one who, dis who helps us understand God's laws and helps us obey them. And the most important thing Jesus wants us to remember is God gave us these laws to bless us so that we could live life abundantly. God didn't give them to us to be a burden. Imagine trying to think of 1,521 different infractions that you have to avoid on the Sabbath day. Is that a blessing or is that a burden? God did not give us the laws like the Sabbath observance to be a burden to us, to prove our love for God and to prove our righteousness. God gave them to us to be a blessing to us. And Jesus, as the Lord of the Sabbath, as the one designated by God to lead us in the right paths, reminds us of that. When we get wrapped up in trying to uh, define exactly what we can and can't do on the Sabbath day and what, it, what qualifies as rest and what qual doesn't, and when we try get all wrapped up in trying to decide what we are allowed to do and who, what we're supposed to be doing, then it becomes a burden. But more than that, we become judgmental of others. Why aren't they doing what I think is right? I uh, remember a story where a pastor and some of his congregation members after the church service went to a restaurant for lunch. We all do that, right? Well, it just so happened that one of the members of this pastor's church was their waitress. And so she came over and she started to take their order and then after she took their order, the pastor said to her, I noticed you weren't in church today. And she said, that's because I was here getting ready to serve you. <laughs> when we get wrapped up in making God's laws hoops to jump through, to prove our righteousness, when the laws are something that we do for their, for their sake, we not only be, make them a burden, we become judgmental of other people and we hurt other people. And that's what the second story Mark tells us this morning is about. Jesus then goes to a synagogue and there's a man with a withered hand, his hands all you know, twisted up. And the Pharisees know that, that that man is there and they know about Jesus' power to heal and Jesus' compassion. And so Jesus comes to the synagogue and he sees the man with the withered hand and he knows what the Pharisees are thinking. They're looking for a way to trap Jesus. And so he asks the question, is it better, is it lawful to do good or to do harm? to save life or to take life? It's a strange question to ask about the Sabbath day. 
The Pharisees refused to answer, and I'm sorry, Walter Williams, but Jesus, we are told right here, Jesus got angry. <laughs> um, Jesus got angry about that. And, and so he heals the man again. It could have waited till, mon- till the next day, Sunday. He could have waited. It wasn't a life-threatening uh, disease. But Jesus is making a point. The Sabbath is to restore life, is to restore health, to help all of us live the abundant life. But why did he talk about doing harm and killing people? Because that's what the Pharisees are thinking about. Suddenly the Sabbath is not showing your love for God. It's not even resting your body and getting ready for a new week. Suddenly the Sabbath has become a way to trap others, specifically Jesus. And when Jesus does this, they go away and they look for a way to destroy Jesus. And whether they had murder on their minds at that point or they were trying to destroy his reputation in the crowd, we aren't told yet. But suddenly the Sabbath has become something to hurt other people with rather than to bless people. And that is why it is so important for us to remember Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. And indeed, Jesus is the one God sent to guide us in how we obey God's commands so that they can be a way to bless us and to bless others instead of a way to judge others and harm them. There's a story about a hunter who would always go out into the woods by himself and he would always get lost. And so eventually, after stumbling around the woods, he'd find an op- a clearing and he would sit down and he would wait because he knew his best friend would know he was missing and would come and find him. And sure enough, his friend would always come and find him and lead him out of the forest. One day, his friend got a little tired of having to go out and find him all the time, so he gave him a compass and taught him how to use it. And so... Uh, confidently, the hunter goes back out into the forest, but sure enough, he gets lost again, and he sits down in the clearing, and he waits for his friend. And his friend arrives and says, why didn't you use the compass? And the hunter said, I did use the compass, but every time I tried to make it point north, it pointed southwest. If we try to take God's laws, like the Sabbath, and force them into what we think they should be, we are going to harm ourselves, we are going to harm other people. We must trust Jesus Christ to lead us in how to observe these commands and how to help others observe them so that everyone can live an abundant life. Amen. Let's uh, stand and we'll sing and sign the doxology as we ask God's blessing on our offerings. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. Provider God, we give you thanks for all your good gifts to us, for work and rest, for creativity and play, for this community in which to practice our faith together. Take these offerings we bring today and use them to meet the needs of those around us. 
May our work and witness reflect our belief in your compassionate care for us and for all you have created. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's remain standing and join together in singing the insert in your bulletins in the garden. is going to play Just As I Am for our postlude. You may be seated.
much, Max. Let's stand and we'll close with our uh, praise song. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. And now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit descend upon you all and be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen.